Okay, so two short videos, right around, hopefully I'll keep them right around, you know, eight minutes or shorter. First one, vote fraud. Don't tell me there's not vote fraud. All right, don't tell me it's sour grapes. Take a look at the links that I have down there, and look at the comments on some of my, my videos already. And by the way, I'm amazed, amazed at how many people are watching these videos. And you know that if they, you know, <laughs> if it says thousand, there's, or hundreds, it's more than that. Because I see Ron Paul videos and other, you know, news clips and so forth, where it's, which actually you can see below here, where, you know, 1,700 likes and 200 views, 217 views, <laughs> it's, you know. I mean, the vote, the the count is as accurate as the vote. <laughs> anyway, vote fraud. Absolutely, there's vote fraud in this country, and they don't know what they're beside themselves. What are they going to do down in South Carolina? They're going to make Mitt Romney number one again. Hmm, how are they going to do that? Because I've been to South Carolina. South Carolina is a small community town, right? Small town, community-minded state. I've been, I've been there. I've been to all the states except for Alaska. And I'm not using that in a derogatory fashion, like, oh, these are small-town folks. Small-town folk is good. They got community. They talk to each other. They know the people that have been, you know, killed by in the steel mills. Well, when I said killed, their jobs killed. Not them killed. Right? Their economy is destroyed by who? What corporation? Was it Mitt Romney? Mitt Romney is not going to do well in South Carolina, so who are they going to put up? Huntsman? Mm, Santorum? It's already, you know, Santorum's already wearing thin, getting booed. People can see it. And they can't miss the fact that the Ron Paul rallies and the Ron Paul meetings have, you know, ten times as many, and their lies are just not working. The whole racist thing, which is what got me started, right, not working. The whole thing, where he's weak on social issues, not working, because people are starting to see. Watch that video, right, two minutes to make a jackass look like a jackass. And some of my friends are like, really? I, I did not realize that Ron Paul would not turn, you know, people out into the street and cut off, you know, child care and, <laughs> and head start. Ron Paul's trying to figure out how to pay for all this. You guys have gotten so used to benefits, we can't afford, you know, guns and butter. Been trying to do it forever and there's just can't do both. Because these wars, we run up, we rack up the debt, what happens? Well, we rack up the debt, then we got to print more money to, to pay for the debt, and every dollar that they print up new makes the old dollars worth less, to the point where, and they're not dollars, they're FRNs now. They're only FRNs, Federal Reserve Notes. Now, the Federal Reserve Note, you know, one Federal Reserve Note is worth, you know, a nickel now, right, from 1913 to 2012. That's the problem. There's the major social issue. That's why people need assistance. That's why the middle class is shrinking is because of this silent, hidden tax called inflation. Ron Paul's talking about that. Oh, they hate him. Oh, they hate him. Right? And they'll say all kinds of things, and they can see now that calling him crazy isn't working, calling him the crazy old man, because people like me and you out there saying he uses the Constitution to base his decisions on, on which to base his decisions. Let's see, <laughs> proper English. Right? The Constitution is his guide. Does that make him crazy? And when you, they start grilling him on the issues and he comes back to constitutional grounds, you listen to them sputter. When he gives them a short, straight answer, like I said, it takes two minutes to make a jackass look like a jackass. Look at the links below. And they're starting to see they, they, the lies aren't working. And the reason for that is because you're working hard. Got to work ten times harder because vote fraud is the real deal in the United States. Look at that Arizona uh, decision. I've got it here. I can see all these hundreds of tabs I've got open, but, right, election fraud, Arizona's ticking time bomb set to reverberate throughout the nation, precedent-setting precedent court case could improve election transparency in the United States, and that's what we need is more transparency, Ron Paul's been talking about this for the longest time, right, transparency in government, but also transparency in the vote, you need to know that your vote was counted, whether it's a straw poll, you know, county council election, whatever, Right? You're voting for your senators, you're voting for president, whoever it is, you need to know your vote was counted. And you can see on the videos that I've put up, all kinds of comments where people can see now, well, wait a minute, I voted for Ron Paul. And the majority of people in Iowa voted for Ron Paul, and they stole that thing. They stole it fair and square, but they stole it. And people are starting to go, hey, wait a minute. New Hampshire, same thing. Right? Now in South Carolina, what are they going to do? <laughs> Alright, so you just got to work hard. Expose the fraud. Don't ignore it. Don't pretend like it's not happening. 
Ron Paul has to take the high road because if he's going to be on TV, they'd try and crucify him if he was, you know, they'd call him like a whiner and a baby and, and all the things, right? But the idea being clear is that they will steal the vote and they're not going to cover it unless we cover it, unless we expose the fraud and make it so they can't ignore it. Just like they're getting to the point where they can't ignore the fact that Ron Paul is popular, that liberty is popular, that his message is popular, and it reverberates between, you know, like I said, 70, 80, 90% of the people. And then I still have people that are worried about the social issues. The only guy trying to figure out how to keep these programs together is Ron Paul. The other guys just want to spend, 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 or... They want to try and start cutting veterans' benefits. They want to start cutting here and there. They lie about how much inflation there is so that they don't have to increase your Social Security checks because they can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't, I mean, the inflation would get out of control, and they know this. So, And again, when we go into debt, how do they pay for it? They print more money, and then the money that's already in circulation becomes worth less, and this is why you need the assistance. This is why you need the food stamps. This is why minimum wage isn't cutting it, and they have to keep raising minimum wage because the dollar is going down. The FRN, that Federal Reserve note, is going down in value faster than you can make money. Right? Faster than they increase the minimum wage. So that you pretty soon you see that you're making a minimum wage and you can't afford to pay rent or mortgage and feed your kids and you know, have a life. And how are they doing this? With the, with the hidden tax called inflation. More people need to understand this. It's the economy, stupid. That is the main thing. The Federal Reserve and how they're wrecking the middle class. That's the main thing. We can't keep all these social programs going. Right? I mean, it's just it's, it, it, if we're going to, then we need to quit spending here or there so that we can afford to spend money on the social programs. Where is the place to cut? All the money we spend overseas in the military all that foreign aid. And then he's not talking about getting rid of the military. He's talking about bringing those guys home to the United States. That would also give us an economic boost. His plans make sense. Then we're able to have, you know, a, a process of weaning these people off. Because you can't just throw these people out in the street. That's what the bankers do. And they try to make it sound like it's Ron Paul. And the bankers are kicking people out of their houses. And, and a lot of times under very questionable circumstance, can't even prove they own the note, that's what the bankers do. So, you know, they try to create this subterfuge where you get it exactly backwards. Right? Ron Paul is trying to figure out how to keep people in their houses. Ron Paul is trying to figure out how to prosecute these bankers. Right? Well, actually, he's not saying that. But expose the fraud. Right? And unlike, take a look at this, you know, story about Obama... Try, you know, from crooks and liars, the Obama administration's new banking fraud deal, still unfair, still unjust, still unbalanced. I'll talk about that in the next video, but I'll have the links here below. Take a look at the stuff from uh, Catherine Albright, who is exceedingly easy on the eyes, um, but an intelligent, beautiful woman it, trying to warn you about RFID for the longest time. Now people are starting to figure out, they really are trying to close the barn door on us. <laughs> uh, anyway... Vote fraud. Expose it. Work ten times harder. Don't ignore it. Right? And we've got to get out there and stay a step ahead of these guys. Got to get better organized. Because the mainstream media is never going to report this. And you want your country back. You want the republic back. Then you need to secure the vote and make sure that your votes are counted. That's the main message on that issue. Because vote fraud is real, guys. You can't ignore it. And it's becoming absolutely clear now. See, the problem is all of this shit is backfiring on them. Pardon my language. Right? <laughs> that, that they're absolutely starting to see that, wait a minute, people are waking up because they realize, hey, wait a minute, I voted for him. How does he in third place? Hey, wait a minute, all my friends vote. I, everybody I know voted for him. How did this guy get to be in third place? Right? He's got 50% of the young people. And then you're starting, they're starting to see that young people talk to each other, right? Using social media and texting and all the other things that you guys do. Twitter and Facebook and, you know, all that. Those are the, just the main ones. There's a, social networks that I, that I don't even participate in that are u being used all the time. They're starting to realize, hey, wait a minute, I voted for all you guys, right? 50% of these guys go to the meetings and so forth, right? More than 50% of the population is showing up, but then when it comes time to vote, they only 20% vote. Right? Wait a minute, even the most brain dead among you is going, hold on a second, hold the phone, that doesn't seem right. 
And now, like I said, they're really worried about South Carolina. Anyway, we can win this thing, I'm telling you. Right? We're, we're, at the, we're past now the stage where they're laughing at us. Right? I mean, that Gandhi quote. Right? First they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Basically. Right? Now they're starting to fight a little bit. But we're going to win this thing. <laughs>